today's video, we're going to be checking out the DC Collectibles DC Icons Figure 25. This is Supergirl. Taking the tape measure. Supergirl is about six and a quarter inches in height. She gets a ton of cool accessories and seems to introduce a lot of cool new interesting accessories I haven't seen before with the DC Icons figures. So let's begin by having a look at those first. The first one I want to talk about is this flight stand that she comes included with, which is a really neat, clever idea that DC collectibles have incorporated. In essentially what it's doing is it's allowing you to put the figure in a flight pose by simply just, you kind of have to bend one leg so that she is obviously looking as if more she's taking off than anything else. You can bring the arm up if you so want. Kind of just angle the head. Kind of getting something similar to maybe something like that. And then go ahead and attach it by the angled part of the base. Attach the feet like so. And you've got yourself an instant display piece. You could do it probably a little bit better than I did, but you get the idea that you can get a pretty neat looking flight pose coming from Supergirl. I really like that. I like the fact that they incorporated that. Um, I haven't seen it before, and I'm I'm certain, I think it comes with the Super Suns as well. But uh, yeah, it's a really neat looking display option. Uh, definitely takes away from just simply displaying the figure on a standing position. Next, speaking of also new things that they introduced for Supergirl, she comes with an interchangeable head. We'll talk about this a little bit more as we change out the head, but here is the alternate head. It looks a little on the creepy side, I admit, because she has holes basically in the eyes of her, of her face. But uh, it is kind of interesting looking, of course, when you incorporate the other thing that she comes included with. She comes with this, these heat ray vision um, little attachments, so to speak. They plug into her eyes, which in, all on its own sounds a little on the disturbing side. Plug it right into her eyes. Some carefulness should be made because these are very, very fragile plastic. The other one is a little trickier to get in there because you have to get it underneath her hair. And you just very carefully, very carefully plug that in. And she's instantly got heat ray vision. Very light. I love that. I just think that's so clever. And You have to make sure you're putting it in the right side. You want the side where it's projecting the heat out of the sides as well. It's a really neat looking effect. Haven't seen it before. I hope we can see it again with future, not only really just icon figures, but DC figures in general. It's a, it's a really neat looking attachment, a really neat effect as well. And then she also comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. Now currently the figure, just get her stand back upright. The figure's hands are closed fisted. Like there's no, not really much you can do with them. However, they also give you a pair of gripping hands, even though she doesn't technically come with any other accessories other than the ones we've just talked about. And then she also has her flat hands in flight mode. I want to talk a little bit about these for a second because I find while everything is really good about this figure, the hands come across a little on the muddy side. Perhaps like the flesh paint has been added over top of a darker plastic that ends up giving it a slightly more dingier looking color. It doesn't have as much the pristine, you know, you know, refreshing light color that flesh tone tends to get. Instead, it comes across a little on the dark side. But she gets two of those hands as well. We'll kind of go back to those in a second. Just want to talk about this figure. I really love the face sculpt here on Supergirl. Between this and Nightwing, I feel as if DC Icons, or at least DC Collectibles, releasing the DC Icons banner. Uh, are up in their game when it comes to new releases. Like these figures seem to be getting better and better. While I did think that the original line of figures were la slightly lackluster in the head sculpts, the new head sculpts really are are phenomenal. Especially Supergirl here. She's got a feminine look t to her face, but she also has a very stern, strong look to her face as well. Paints really done nicely. 
you can probably see it as well. I've got a little bit of just, I don't know if a little speck of paint or something like that on the bottom of her hair. Normally one would not notice it, but by the nature of the fact that her hair is so light in color, unfortunately that speck stands out like a sore thumb. But I do think the face is really good. Flesh tone is really good on this too, which is something I also mentioned with the Nightwing. Like they're getting better when it comes to the, the coloring of the skin. It's not a very pale, sickly color. It's not a super warm color either. It's kind of a nice mix between the two. Then looking at the rest of her body, she has a more traditional Supergirl costume, complete with skirt, of course the top blue shirt, uh, thigh-high boots, and her cape. The cape is good, although it does drape over her shoulders, and as you can imagine, it probably does, it does limit a little bit of posability. The cape is flexible enough in the way it's made, it's like a very thin rubber, but getting her arm up, for example, all the way to have her flying upward does make things a little bit more trickier to do that. Uh, like the emblem, that is a raised emblem as opposed to just simply painting it over top of the existing torso. The skirt is sculpted done very done, like, uh, done nicely as well. As you can see, they've got kind of a darker orange gold color added to the belt. And everything generally is pretty clean about the figure. Even the super emblem, Supergirl's emblem on the back is done nicely. And I really like the sculpt of her hair. It's compact, but it does have still enough flow to it that it doesn't look lifeless. I think my favorite color on this figure is the blue. It nailed the blue. And I don't know, it does seem like it's a little on the chalky side. Like maybe more paint was added than what was necessary. Does it does look like a little, a little excess, but I think it still works quite well on this particular figure. About the only thing that really kind of bothers me, I don't know if it's just strange for me to say this, but the thickness of her boots kind of bother me. The fact that she's got this kind of tread going underneath. I don't know why that's such a small, it's such an insignificant point to make. And yeah, I just for some reason feel the, the need to mention that. Peg holes on the undersides of the feet as proven by the fact that she was standing under display stand. But you can see one thing, she's not pegged on either side or on both sides. She's only pegged on one side. I don't know why they didn't put peg holes on both sides of the figure. Uh, let's go ahead. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take the head off here just to show you. Wiggle that off the ball joint like so. We're going to replace it with the cool heat heat ray. It does, I mean, it does look really creepy without adding the beams to it. Uh, but one thing also that I want to mention, and the reason why I changed up the hair is, or the head, is that the hair also flows outward as opposed to just draping flat down. It could be only something I could accomplish by taking the head off and swapping it that I could show you the difference between the two. You see that the hair drops further down, flat to her back. This one jets further out. Again, I like that. All right, let's look at her posability. Her head is on a ball joint, which is a much easier thing to accomplish because I've switched out the head. Universal joints on the shoulders. So of course you can move the arms forward and back. She's got a swivel on the bicep. Uh, only a single, actually that's not true, a double hinge on the elbow. You know, uh, just a swivel in the wrist and hinge back and forth. Of course, she's got the upper torso ball joint, a lower torso crunch, and she's got a considerable amount of posability in the leg. Despite the fact that you would think the skirt would hinder a lot of that, the skirt is so thin and the material that they use for it is uh, flexible enough that she gets some extra, you know, you can get a lot of extra range and motion from that. She also gets a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, basically where the leg connects itself to the socket of the torso. And then she's got the double ball joint or double hinge joint on the leg. Also got the hinge on the foot. A little bit on the ankle rocker, not a considerable amount, not to the level that Nightwing had, but she does have that as well. I love this figure. I love it so much that I'm finding myself getting more and more excited for the DC Icons line, which is not really something that I initially started with that feeling. The first wave or so, I liked the figures, but I really wasn't wowed by them. Between this one and, of course, the Nightwing that we just previously looked at, I'm super excited to hopefully see future outings for the DC Icons banner. I know a lot of people really dislike the fact that the height size difference was really thrown off from the rest of the figures that they were releasing, but I'm really feeling as if like DC Icons and DC Collectibles especially are putting more and more time into this line that they didn't put as much maybe in the initial runs of the figures that we were getting. 
I love the interchangeable head options here on Supergirl. The heat rays coming out from her eyes are really an exceptional touch and likely going to be how I display the figure. And let's not, of course, forget the flight stand. A flight stand is an awesome piece that even if I don't end up displaying it with Supergirl, I'm most definitely going to be displaying with a flying, flying character, perhaps maybe a Superman. Today, though, we were having a look at a fantastic looking figure. This was the DC Icons Figure 25 Supergirl, which is currently available at local comic book stores. If you guys haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, make sure you hit that little button that's just below this video. It says subscribe, and you'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. Speaking of future videos, of course, many more videos will be coming your way as we go through the month. We've still got Christmas videos, of course, on the side. But we're not obviously going to skimp over the fact that there's a lot of cool superhero figures on the market as well. So we're going to be having a look at those as well. Thanks for watching as you always do, guys. I'll see you next time.